What up YouTube? This video is taken on the Saturday afternoon, September 9th, 2023. And uh, I did a little bit of flying today. Uh, flew eight packs, which is what I'm down to currently. I'm down to only having eight uh, batteries. And uh, I didn't break anything, uh, but I didn't really do anything too exciting. Just kind of, just kind of enjoyed flying. Uh, we were at the local community college, uh, Stacy and I, and uh, security is really chill there. They don't have any problems with us flying, so we just uh, were flying some packs. Didn't break anything, which was a blessing. But I did do something really stupid. I, I did not bring any drone recovery gear with me. And uh, the very last pack, I was flying my one DJI quad, the Ruby one, the whole time. And for my last pack, I decided to fly the HD Zero quad to make sure it worked because I'm planning on using that for a project this week. And uh, sure enough, I got it stuck right in a palm tree. And uh, I didn't have my pole, nothing. And uh, I thought Stacy would have his pole, but I wasn't thinking. Um, he recently got rid of his Traverse and uh, got a Camry, I think it is. And uh, he didn't have his pole. He can't carry his pole anymore. So luckily the Home Depot was uh, seven minutes away, so it wasn't that far at all. So I, I rented a pole from Home Depot. And returned it and uh, got the quad out of the tree. But other than that, it was just a nice, uh, quiet day flying. Uh, so I thought I would do a little general update. Uh, I think I'm on these flap and flu video where I voice over my uh, flight videos. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoy. There's really nothing too exciting today i did there was a couple of challenges uh there was a picnic table power loop challenge that i tried to do i believe i did that once but when i tried to do it cleanly i couldn't do it and then there was this um doing this s this challenge of doing this um s loop in between these palm trees and then going between this gap between the bushes at the end and uh, i did that one first try and then i tried to a first try but i kind of skidded off the cement and then i tried to do it more times couldn't do it and then i finally did it again and i think when i did it the last time it was clean uh, we'll have to see playing back these videos but one of the main reasons why i didn't have my pole with me or any of my drone recovery gear is i had my truck with me i didn't bring my car my car is low on oil and it's over four thousand miles on the oil change actually i think it's over 4,500 miles since the last oil change and it's low in oil and I since I'm going to change the oil or need to change the oil I didn't want to add any oil so I'm, I'll probably do that uh, this week on Monday uh, change oil in the car I had a weird situation with the car where the alternator burned out but it burned out when I was trying to accelerate real hard off the highway and the car wouldn't accelerate so my friend Scott thinks that maybe somehow when it couldn't accelerate right, it shot the RPMs of the motor up real high and it burned out the regulator and the alternator. But uh, luckily I bought that alternator like two and a half years ago at AutoZone and they uh, gave me another one for free. So I replaced that. And after I replaced it, when I started up the car, it had a loud noise and I thought the alternator was winding whining and i was testing the alternator the alternator was working fine but i thought the, the alternator was whining and my neighbor was noticing what was going on and he said that's not your alternator that's your power steering pump sure enough he was right i moved the power steering pump back and forth a little bit and the whining went away and but the weird part about it is it shot power steering fluid on the floor but i never actually saw it shoot power steering fluid on the floor just the power steering fluid was on the floor and since then, it hasn't leaked any more power steering fluid. So I, that's still a mystery of why it shot power steering fluid on the floor. And then on top of all this, my one tire has been running flat. Very, very slow leak. 
but I got the warranty on those tires from Tire Kingdom. So I hate dealing with those places. So I took the tire off myself and I dropped it off today at Tire Kingdom and I came back a little over two hours later and it was done. And uh, they patched it from the inside. So apparently they found a nail in it, even though I personally didn't find the nail in it. But <clears throat> it's kind of funny. Those places are just so hard to deal with. There's like no such thing as customer service at those places. And it kind of cringes you when you see them interact with other people because the first thing I think of is they're just taking advantage of people. But, um, you know, luckily that I had a tire warranty and it was uh, totally free to have that done. It's just, uh, you know, you had to deal with them. So I, I put the tire back on today, but I still need to change oil. That's why I didn't have my car or none of my drone gear. Um, my Also, my Bush Gardens Pass is going to expire in two days. So yesterday, uh, Friday, I went to Bush Gardens. Uh, just because the last time I went, it was like the Bring Your Friend Day. And a whole bunch of us went. It was on a Saturday, too, and it was super busy. We barely got to ride anything. But in those cases, it's not that bad because you're hanging out with your friends. Uh, but yesterday, I went by myself, and I just kind of did the loop. Um... I rode Montu twice. I rode Guazi in the back seat once. It wasn't busy, but there were some things that wasn't worth waiting on. So like Shrika was like too long for me to uh, want to wait on, so I skipped that. Rode the log flume just because I haven't, I didn't ride the log flume that much. And then rode, rode Kumba once. Rode. Scorpion, a uh, cheetah hunt was too long for me to wait. Even though it said cheetah hunt said it was like 20 minutes, but it had too many switchbacks. I didn't feel like waiting. And yeah, I think when I did the loop, my last roller coaster was Scorpion, where I rode the Sven get Sarah Vangetti's flyers or whatever. And then I went and I rode the train because I figured I haven't ridden the train in a while. So I rode a whole loop on the train. And uh, their train ride's pretty good with the safari and everything. I really wish I had my phone set up right because the train goes right in the back of the Sheikah um, maintenance bay. And they had uh, the train all tore apart for a cycle. And the, they had the door open. But it, it was real brief and I wasn't prepared uh, to take a picture of that. But I'm just going to let my pass expire. I'm kind of like uh, Bush Gardens out. I've had the pass close to two years in a row. I did have a gap in between my pass for these last two years. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of Bush Gardens out. Last um, couple weeks ago, I did go to SeaWorld 2 because I knew my pass was going to expire, and I rode Pipeline because I haven't ridden that yet. I rode Pipeline three times that day, make it three times, and... I rode, um, what's the floorless one there? Kraken once. And I wanted to ride Journey to Atlantis, but it was broken. Um, so I didn't get to ride that. So, yeah, this last month I wanted to get my money's worth out. Pipeline was actually surprisingly, um, I think it was a good addition to the park. Um, it's different. It's, uh, it was, I liked it because it was different. You know, it has a different feeling. It's not my first stand-up roller coaster. I, I rode Shockwave at King's Dominion growing up, which was a Togo stand-up coaster. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of coastered out. And, you know, the weird part is I can't ride coasters back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back like I used to. Um, I do, I guess since I'm getting older, I do get kind of sick if I ride them back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. So I'll... Uh, I'll probably go a whole year without uh, go, uh, getting a Bush Gardens pass. Um, because like yesterday, I kind of wanted to do like house more house projects that I have lined up than go to Bush Gardens, but I wanted to go to feel like I got my money's worth out of the pass. And my biggest disappointment is with these two years that I've had this annual pass, they still haven't brought back the Sky Ride. And uh, I thought they had a really good sky ride because it goes through the their um, animal exhibit. 
but yeah, they still haven't brought the Sky Ride back. When I rode the train, you saw that they had all the Sky Ride, Sky Ride cars out in like the storage track on the mid, the mid transfer station. And at one point, I thought I saw them working on the Sky Ride a couple of months ago when I was at Bush Gardens. But uh, yes, still not back. So yeah, um, I'm pretty much, and I would, I almost thought about vlogging um, my last trip to Bush Gardens, but I didn't. I still have all this footage. The last week that um, Sand Serpent was open, I went and I uh, filmed Sand Serpent, filmed all this video on Sand Serpent, and I still had to release that footage. I was going to try to make a video talking about Sand Serpent, um, kind of talking about the history of it, but that for that type of video, I would have to like write a script, and I kind of don't feel in the mood for writing a script, but maybe in the future I'll do that. But I'm I'm glad I documented that video because it is totally leveled. It's gone. But other than that, um, I've been uh, trying to be productive with my time now that I'm out of school and tackle projects. I'm working on a pizza cam video right now, so you guys will be happy. Um, I wanted to actually release a pizza cam video on Friday, but I haven't really got in there yet. So uh, be on the lookout of that. Probably at the end of this week, I'll release a pizza cam video. And I also will have an announcement about pizza cam. Um, I'm going to be using it in a project and uh, I'll announce it in that video. And the good news about that project is, or good news or bad news, probably good news for you, bad news for me, is that project for pizza cam has a deadline. So it's going to force me to actually work on that video and then put out more content. I've noticed my animatronics videos, they've have always been my most popular YouTube videos, but I noticed that the past month they've surged again um, for some reason. So if you're here for the animatronics videos, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, definitely I'm working on animatronics videos. Like I said, I'm trying to uh, push out projects. Uh, right now I'm building up two new freestyle quads both are Questor frames, one DJI and one HD Zero. And I'm filming that to kind of document um, how I build a freestyle frame. And I like uh, filming YouTube videos on stuff like that because it helps me reference. It's an easy way for me to go back and reference notes. Like, for example, um, what size M3 screws I'm using for the stack it's a lot easier for me to say, oh, I mentioned that in this video. And I'll, so I'll watch the video on YouTube with that part, and then I'll know that size. Another example of that is um, I, uh, I kind of perfected a way to do multicolor 3D prints with my printer, which has a single extruder. So I filmed a video about doing that but I was gonna edit it, put it on YouTube. But at this point, I updated all my gear to 4K, and that video is filmed to 1080. So I'm probably gonna refilm that video and upload it to YouTube in 4K. But between that time, time went by without me making any multicolor prints, and I forgot. I forgot how to do it. Not that I didn't know how to do it, but like how long I keep the soldering iron on the filament to fuse the two filaments together i had that documented in that video and i forgot it so i was able to go back on my video that i haven't uploaded yet and uh, get that information so that's like i always said i always make youtube videos that i would want to listen to like for example that this video of me flapping is probably really boring to most but in three four five years now i would get enjoyment going back and listening to what i had to have to say in this video um the guy i used to listen to his flapping videos the most he doesn't post flapping videos anymore which is a shame i'm not going to mention him because i guess he was having problems with trolls and uh he uh he says he's posting videos but he won't post flapping videos anymore um but yeah i even though these flapping videos aren't that popular they're the type of videos that you know i like to 
uh, listen to. And that's what my channel has always been about. The, my channel has always been about making the videos that I like uh, to watch or content that I like to produce. And then it's always just a, it's just a real bonus when other people actually enjoy my videos too. Like the fact that I have 10,000 subscribers is kind of insane. So those are like the big projects. Uh, there's another big project I'm going to work on, but I haven't started yet. Uh, and basically I, I want to get more into Cinewhoopin. So I'm going to build my own Cinewhoop. So I'm going to design, design and build my own Cinewhoop and I'll document that. And I'll probably, um, it's out of the scope of this video. There's a specific reason why I want to get into Cinewolfing. And it's something that I feel is unique and no one else has done it yet for a drone video. It's not groundbreaking, but the concept of it, I don't believe has been done with a drone video yet. So I want to do it because I'll be the first one. So I'm not going to explain what it is. Uh, you'll just have to stick around to find out. Um, but in order to achieve that type of video, I need to use it on a Cinewhoop. And also to achieve that type of video, I needed to use the new GoPro with the 8.7 sensor. So, oh yeah, and I, I was going to hold this project on the back burner, but I ended up buying the parts because Race Day Quad sent me a 10% off coupon. So since I had that coupon... I figured, oh, I'll just go ahead and buy the parts for the Cinewhoop project. But then, on top of that, I needed a... To, in order to do this video a certain way, I needed a GoPro Hero 11 to use the 8.7 sensor mode. And then I found out that, hey, they're coming out with a 12. So I waited to see, you know, what was the difference between an 11 and 12. And a lot of people online are really... Uh, giving the 12 a hard time. But if you remember, the GoPro Hero 11 got released for $500. And right now it's down to $350. And the 12 is getting released for $400. So basically, the way I interpret it is the 12 is just an 11 that they fixed the overheating problems that they had with the 11. So that $50 difference, since I don't have the 11 and I need the 87 sensor, I did decide to order the 12 and I ordered it through Best Buy and got their warranty and I'm supposed to pick it up on Wednesday when it comes out. So that's probably going to be my next video because I'm planning on unboxing it and putting it on a quad right away and filming a video and releasing that video the same day it comes out to try to, you know, get some clout for having the newest GoPro on the day that it released. Um, so that's what I'm doing that GoPro project just for, I'm buying that GoPro just for the Cinewhoop project that I'll probably document too. But yeah, after I've been thinking about this idea of getting more into Cinewhoop, and I just think all these different applications where I can just pull off on the side of the road, run a Cinewhoop somewhere, you know, through a place that you would not want to just rip and dip a five inch. You can rip and dip a Cinewhoop a lot safer than ripping and dipping a five inch. So that's pretty much uh, all I had to uh, flap about today. I actually, I did something a little different on this flap. I actually took notes of what I wanted to talk about it and what order I wanted to talk about it. So hopefully this video came out a little more a better production quality than uh, my typical uh, flapping videos. But uh, thanks. If you stick around this long, thanks for sticking around. And I'll see you guys on the next one.